I right now am in the middle of spring cleaning. It is that time of the year. But uh, the other day I was cleaning my bathroom. And uh, as you know, we just had our bathroom redone. It's been under okay. construction for quite some time. And so when I was cleaning it, I was using various cleaning products and probably missing, mixing things I shouldn't have been mixing because all of a sudden the fumes were a little bit overwhelming. And uh, that bathroom doesn't have a window, uh, okay. but I had to go through, open up some windows and get out of the room. And, uh, you know, sadly, so many people right now um, do mix and they, you can get sick from some oh, yeah. of these things. And the good thing is we do have the Michigan Poison Center and they have a 1-800 number that you can call when you go into these situations. So to talk so much more about this and other things to do with the uh, poison, uh, let's bring in Dr. Varun Vora. He is the academic director and clinical toxicologist for the Michigan Poison Center. Doctor, so great to have you with us again. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Tyler. How you doing? So what is one of the biggest concerns for um, people there at the uh, Poison Center this time of year? Yeah, so around this time of year, especially Easter time, especially this weekend, um, one thing that comes to mind, you know, chocolates, obviously they're gonna be a plentiful for the kids, right? So always um, beware, it could be a choking hazard for the kids, and especially around animals too. You know how dogs can, you know, dogs and cats can get into things like that, and we know inherently they're not good for dogs. Um, so making sure that you keep them uh, away, stored safely, and, kids are taking chocolates from people that they know, especially uh, adults that they know, and not um, eating anything that, you know, from a stranger, obviously. Uh, like you mentioned, cleaning products, um, that's always kind of ubiquitous this time of year. So like you mentioned, the, the story that you had in your bathroom. So, I mean, even mixing toilet bowl cleaner with things like ammonia or like bleach plus ammonia creates this compound. It's called chloramine. That's probably what you were exposed to. It highly volatile. Um, so it creates these fumes that are really irritating to the sinuses so it can cause you you know you to tear up to cough be kind of short of breath so when that happens you know the best thing to do is to kind of remove yourself from the situation open a window if you can uh, ventilate the area or the door uh, make sure you get those fumes out um, and then you know in the garage as well cleaning the garage I'm sure is gonna be a big thing um, there are a lot of different types of products and cleaners um, there so you want to keep them away up and away from children especially these things can be very attractive to children if they're open especially even little sips of anything um, so that's something like wheel cleaner um, can be very very toxic and devastating um, it has a compound called ammonium bifluoride in it um, which can be heavily 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 toxic and damaging to the airways and potentially cause serious manifestations um, in, in, you know in the cardiovascular system as well so things of that nature there are a lot of dangerous things in the in the garage um, that we want to keep kids away from. Uh, so, doctor, if I'm a parent and my uh, child ingests something, obviously mm -hmm. I call 911 first. Mm -hmm. Should I make another call to you and your agency while I'm waiting for those first responders? Yeah, I think, you know, typically, I think we would, we would definitely recommend calling the Poison Center first because sometimes you know, the initial reaction is panic, right? From a, from a parent especially. So to call the poison center first, because we have trained specialists who are answering the phones. We have trained, you know, board certified toxicologists who uh, they consult for higher level care. But a lot of times that poison center will be, or can be an effective middleman uh, right through between uh, you and the first responders to decipher whether first response is even needed, whether the patient or the person needs to even go to the hospital. Because sometimes things can be handled at the home uh, pretty effectively. Uh, one thing we will continue to recommend, and we we never recommend people inducing vomiting or making people vomit, because that can introduce a whole host of different issues, um, like aspiration of the vomit into the lungs, which can be a whole nother um, can of worms um, that can create a whole host of other issues. So calling the Poison Center, we're always here. Like you mentioned, the 800 number, it's 222, 1-800-222-1222. Uh, again, 24-7, 365, we have our specialists ready to go. So uh, we'll, we'll, we can help you there with whatever you need. So 
Excuse me, I'm already learning something new because that's one of the first things you would think, oh, make them throw it up to get it out of their system. So there are so many of these things. I, I feel like when you become a parent, it needs to come with this guidebook, right? Yeah. <laughs> that you need to study right. and pass before because, right. you know, we have so many um, public service announcements around 911 and we teach young ki kids call 911. Mm -hmm. Do we need more of a public service platform to push for parents to become more aware of the Poison Center and the work that you guys are doing over there? I think so, absolutely. I mean, what we've done recently in the past year, we've kind of upped our um, advertising. Uh, so the Michigan Poison Center has a new affiliation with Wayne State University School of Medicine as of August 2019. Um, so that's been a huge uh, a boon for us. Um, we've upped our advertising. We've had billboards um, in and around uh, Metro Detroit, Lansing, uh, Grand Rapids. Uh, we're gonna continue to try and uh, have another round there as well of, of um, a campaign. Um, we have our new website, brand spanking new website, mipoisonhelp.org. We have a ton of resources there that can help everyone. We, you know, for the spring, we have our spring safety guide and the household clean, uh, safety checklist as well, which we just put up uh, with the help of our Poison Center educator. Um, you know, and we have direct links to the American Association of Poison Control Center, uh, which provides a whole host of other resources as well. So, um, yeah, we're we're in the works of doing that. We're trying to, you know, get out there in the community. It's been really hard, obviously, with COVID, um, not being able to do as much direct outreach as we normally do with schools and um, public health agencies. But we're we're making do right now, and saliently, you know. National Poison Prevention Week was actually last week, from the 21st to the 27th, which was uh, which was awesome. So it was the whole theme was prepare, uh, prevent, and protect. Um, and we had a Facebook Live event. We're on social media as well, so we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Just search for us and follow us, and you'll get all the the recent updates um, that that we uh, we let Michiganders know. Dr. Bora with us here on the Mega Cast. He's the academic director and clinical toxicologist for the Michigan Poison Center. And doctor, when you say prepare, are there things we should have in our houses to in, in the event of an emergency? I think having, you know, the most pertinent thing for me would be having access, direct access to the poison center, uh, the poison center being, you know, in your speed dial or your in your cell phone, um, direct access to that number, I think can be really, you can save a lot of time because sometimes people have a million things in their heads, they can't remember this, or they're looking for the number, right? So having that ready to go, I think uh, preparing and prevention kind of go hand in hand with, you know, making sure that medication bottles are up and away from children, remembering that the caps are not child proof, they're child resistant, right? So they still, people can still get into them, just making sure that they're tight, tightly on and away um, from children, uh, making sure that things are out of reach and just in there where they're supposed to be in, in cupboards and drawers and whatnot, um, especially those cleaning products, especially in the kitchen and the bathroom. Um, and just, you know, making sure that you're, you're keeping an eye on your kid. I know that they get away, they get into a whole host of things, but um, those are kind of the easy low hanging fruit things that people can do that don't take a lot of time. But um, I think keeping that poison center number handy, whether it's on a fridge, we have magnets, all sorts of certain merchandise, but keeping that number in your, in your phone is huge. I'm going to program it in my phone as soon as we get mm. done here because that is so important to know and I never thought about that before. It, um, with that, we know it's springtime, more more people hopefully are going to be getting outdoors yeah. and enjoying the weather after this winter. Um, but how do you know what's poisonous outside and what isn't? That's the that's the conundrum, right? So that's it's very hard. I mean, even with um, something like mushrooms, the mushroom season is coming up, uh, April, May time. So, you know, the morels, um, especially that's a big thing, especially in Michigan. So, there's a difference between true morels and false morels. So the false morels can be highly toxic, but they look very much alike. Um, so things of that nature, we always encourage people to call the poison center first if they want in more information or people who are into foraging, making sure that you are doing it in the presence of an expert um, or consulting an expert before going ahead and do it. There's an old saying, there are uh, old mushroom foragers and bold mushroom foragers, but there's no old bold mushroom foragers. So um, that's, that's something that we keep handy um, as a kind of an axiom in, in the poison center. Um, so knowing the differences is very hard and we don't expect 
the, the lay public to know those differences and uh, distinguishing factors. So always call the poison center or at best leave it be um, and make sure you're consulting an expert before you get into anything like that. Uh, we have pheasant venomous snakes as well in Michigan. The, the only venomous snake native to Michigan is the Eastern Massasauga snake, um, which can be found mostly in swamplands and you know grasslands and prairie lands, things of that nature. Um, always being on the lookout, um, having having the poison center number handy. That in that instance, in the event of a snake bite, call 911. They will call us as well, and we'll be made aware of it. Um, but doing things, making sure that you're not doing certain things, do not suction it. You know, people, uh, what they've been traditionally taught is to suction snake bites with either orally or to wrap a tourniquet around snake bites. Do not do that because that can actually cause more harm. Um, so, you know, berries as well, choking hazards for kids, um, staying away from them. It's always abstinence is probably the best, uh, best advice is when you see things that are unsure, call the poison center or just avoid it completely and we can help along with the, uh, the identification. So what type of trends are you seeing over the past year with the pandemic? Hand sanitizer ingestions have gone way up. Um, cleaning products in general, disinfectants, hand sanitizers, and the the complicating factor with hand sanitizers um, during the pandemic is that they're, they've been contaminated with a lot of other products such as methanol, uh, which is a highly toxic alcohol, um, which can lead to a whole host of issues and vision problems. It can even cause blindness. Um, it has been responsible for some deaths um, as well. Isopropyl alcohol is basically the main ingredient that you'll see in a lot of rubbing alcohols. Um, that can cause a lot of irritation in the throat and the GI system. Um, so, you know, we've seen a lot, they've just been available a lot around the household uh, because of the pandemic. So with that inherently, the risk is gonna go up, especially access with children, um, which can be which can be pretty devastating. It doesn't take a lot for, for that to uh, cause a significant toxicity. Um, hand sanitizer in, in general can contain ethanol as well. So just basic alcohol, which can cause inebriation, sedation, it can cause vomiting, especially in children. Um, so we're seeing that a lot. Uh, we've seen that quite a bit in the past year. Is there any danger to leaving it in your car, especially in the summer months? I mean, typically we don't recommend it. Keep it usually, you know, covered either in the glove compartment. Um, again, there's always a risk, especially if you have kids, if it's just out and about um, or even animals as well. But typically we recommend them keeping in the glove compartment or in sort of the middle console. Um, but yeah, you don't want the thing to overheat, especially in plastic as well. Um, if, you know, with the with the potential there for the plastic to to kind of get compromised but otherwise we typically recommend them being you know, in, a, in a safe safe stored compartment dr barum vora with us here on the mega cast he's with the michigan poison center and doctor uh we're talking a lot about people and kids what about our pets should we mm -hmm. call the poison center for pets as well yeah, so we we can handle some uh some pet exposures we have some trained staff who who can help with that but things that require higher, higher level care or more specialized or nuanced care, we have direct access to all the resources for the Pet Poison Helpline. So if you just call our number, uh, we have all those re resources ready to go and we can provide them uh, to people whenever they need. Because we know so many uh, dogs get out right now, mm -hmm. this time of the year, cats as yeah. well, yeah. strolling through the exactly. neighborhood. We have this cat in our neighborhood and it's just like, whose cat is that? It has a tag. <laughs> it's usually right. laying on top of my car. Uh, but <laughs> when they get out, there are so many things that they mm -hmm. can get into right now but also right. I always worry about them um, uh, my other cocker spaniel one time she picked up a frog and then started foaming at the mouth because yeah. uh, whatever the the frog was yeah. or toad was releasing and right. so we forget about our pets as well mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, especially, you know, like I mentioned with Easter right now, you know, with the chocolates going to be, you know, and the candies and whatnot are going to be abound or plentiful. So, um, yeah, always look out for that um, and call us. I mean, we have those resources and we have trained staff who can help. And if they can help specifically with the specific exposure, we have uh, direct access to the people who, who can help. So recently we've been seeing a lot of recalls going yeah. on for various things. What should you do? if you already have one of those items. I, I know a lot of times it's like, hey, this batch number, check it. But so many times I'm like, well, I already cooked it and ate it. So, right. you know, is it make you, you know, if you are not feeling the effects already, you're mm -hmm. probably in the clear. 
You'd hope so. Typically, I mean, there's only very few things that you know uh, would would take a long, long time more on the order of days to to produce a significant toxicity. Um, but the things that we recommend typically with consumers is stop using them immediately. Um, get rid of them. Um, if you want to do more research, look at the specific batch numbers if those if that information is available. But all you know, all in all. Stop using it, discontinue, get rid of it. Call your healthcare professional. If you do have any symptoms, um, your healthcare provider, um, you can go to your local pharmacy as well if you want more information. I'm sure the pharmacist there can help as well with um, identifying certain products. Uh, there was a recent recall of uh, an alkaline water called Real Water um, in kids, especially late last year, which was leading to a lot of liver issues. Um, so it's the brand is called Real Water. So if anyone's got that, discontinue use immediately, do get rid of it, do not use it um, because it has shown uh, significant toxicity um, in kids typically around seven months to five years old, um, they were exposed. So they were having some liver issues. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are the recommendations that we have generally for, for uh, the civilian population is just if you have it, don't use it anymore. If you have any symptoms, call the poison center, go to your healthcare provider immediately. Doctor, uh, always great having you with us here on the show. Just another minute or two before we say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Anything maybe we didn't touch on that you want to share with the uh, public before we say goodbye? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, universal risk, I mean, you know, with Tide Pods, especially, again, keep those in their packaging. They can be really colorful. They're attractive to children. They can cause a lot of irritation, vomiting in um, and throat irritation and um uh, toxicity in kids. So always keeping those up and away in their sealed packaging, um, the child resistant packaging. Um, from a Michigan public health perspective, there is something on the radar called Delta 8 THC, uh, which is if, you know, when you think of marijuana, the active psychoactive component is Delta 9 THC. So there's a new sort of compound out there, relatively new, that's not been on the radar for some time. It's Delta 8 THC, which has been um, uh, it has been present in Michigan, um, being sold in vape shops as disguised as CBD-like products. Um, and there've been um, issues in recent states and nearby states where uh, exposures to children have led to ICU admission um, from exposure to the Delta-8 THC. Uh, so for people to be on the lookout for that, we're working with uh, MDHHS on that and we've notified them. Um, so we're working hand in hand with them to kind of increase and disseminate that message. Um, but otherwise, follow us on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, mipoisonhelp.org, and our number is 1-800-222-1222. Doctor, we so appreciate your time. Thank you. Have and a good day. You too, and have a, a, a safe and healthy weekend. You too. Take care. <laughs> Dr. Vavroom Borwa with us here on the Megacast. He's the academic director and clinical toxicologist for the Michigan Poison Center. Again, the number 1-800-222-1222. So important to put that in your phone because in those moments when panic sets in, you don't want to have to try to search for the number. So put it in your phone. You'll Hopefully you never have to use it, though.